good morning my children and welcome back for our science classes us in this classes we have we have already started our lesson number 10 in the science and in this chapter we have our topic is the force and the friction in our previous class we have we have already seen the definition of the force what is force then we have already seen the types of forces what are the two main types of the forces the contact force and the non contact force and after that we have already seen what is the definition of the contact force and what is the definition of the non contact force then we have seen the two main type of the contact force that they are the muscular force or the applied force and the frictional force they are coming under the category of the contact force now today we are going to come to the topic that is going to say something about the non contact force what are non contact force the force which do not need any type of the physical touch the force which do not need any type of the physical touch and they then also they are acting and then they are also acting upon a substance and they are called the non contact force the force which do not need any physical touch or the contact with the body upon which they want to act they are called the non contact force in our contact force which we have seen the definition the force which need the physical touch the force which need the physical touch or the force which need the contact then only they can act upon the body it means both the body should touch one another then only the force can act but in the case of the non contact force the force they do not need any type of the physical touch or the contact then also the force is acting it means between the two bodies suppose there is no touch also the force is acting so let us see the definition of the contact force the force which need the force which needs a physical the force which needs a physical touch between between two bodies between two bodies between two bodies to act is known as is known as contact force is known as contact force a force force this is my child the force the force which need the force which need a physical touch between two bodies to act is known as a contact force it means the two bodies should touch to one another then only the force can act between them suppose such type of force is acting when the two bodies are touching to one another that is called the contact force for example the frictional force suppose the frictional force is acting suppose my this palm and this palm both the palms are touching to one another my both the palms are touching to one another so between the two palms the force is acting the frictional force is acting when i am trying to rub my one palm upon the another palm so both the palms are in touch with one another then the frictional force is acting in the same way suppose i am carrying the bucket of the water i am holding the bucket in my hand i am holding the buckets in buckets in my hand so my body is in the touch of the my hand the bucket the buckets are in the touch of my hand the buckets are in the touch of my hand then only i am able to carry the buckets from one place to another place so that is called the muscular force or force or the applied force for example suppose there is a football and suppose we are kicking the football so my leg has to touch the football then only my leg can kick the football and the football can move so the force the force which need the force which need a physical touch between the two bodies to act is known as a contact force suppose i have to pull or push a table suppose i have to pull or push a table then i have to touch the table and i have to pull and push the table then only the force can act suppose i want to pull or push a table i have to touch the table then only i can pull or push it so that is also type of the contact force suppose my child we are saying that the horses are horses are pulling the tonga horses are pulling the tonga so the horse body has to touch the horse body has to touch the tonga then only the horse is able to touch horse is able to pull the tonga suppose the horse is standing somewhere else and the tonga is standing somewhere else the tonga cannot be pulled so suppose we want to pull the tonga with the help of the horses we have to tie the rope from the horse body to the tonga so both the body should be in the physical contact then only the tonga can be pulled so the force which need a physical touch between two bodies to act is known as the contact force so two examples which we have seen that the applied force or muscular force and the frictional force they are coming under the category of the contact force then let us see about the non contact force my child today our main topic will be the non contact force so my child let us see about the non contact force non contact c o n t a c t 
not wanted force. So let us see the definition my child. The force, the force which do not need a physical physical touch between the two bodies two bodies to act to act is known as is known as a non contact force non contact is known as a non contact force so my dear children listen very carefully so the definition of the non contact force the force the force the force which do not need a physical contact between the two bodies to act is known as a non contact force this means my dear children the non contact force the non contact force is just opposite to the contact force the non contact force is just opposite to the contact force so the force the force which do not need a physical touch the force which do not need the force which do not need a physical touch between the two bodies to act is known as a non contact force so suppose suppose the two bodies are not touching to one another suppose the two bodies are not touching to one another then also the force is acting between the two bodies that force is called a non contact force now let us see once again the force the force which do not need a physical touch between the two bodies to act is known as a non contact force now let us see about the examples of the non contact force yeah examples here comes beta examples 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 of non contact force examples of non contact force so my children listen very carefully first one gravitational force gravitational force so now let us see what is gravitational force the pull force the pull force from the earth the pull force from the earth which is acting upon each and every object the pull force from the earth which is acting upon each and every object to pull the object toward the earth that is called the gravitational force so listen very carefully what is gravitational force the pull force the pull force the pull force of the earth the pull force of the earth which act upon each and every object each and every object each and every object to pull to pull it towards to pull it towards the earth see my child let us see gravitational force what is gravitational force the pull force of the earth the pull force of the earth which is acting upon each and every object the pull force of the earth which is acting upon each and every object to pull the object toward the earth to pull the object toward the earth that is called the gravitational force so the the pull force the pull force of the earth which act upon each and every object to pull it toward the earth is called the gravitational force for example beta we have seen suppose if see my child suppose i am throwing this chalk upside it will obviously fall down side why it will fall down because the earth is pulling this chalk toward down side i am throwing this chalk upper side but the chalk is coming down side because the earth is pulling the chalk down towards it we have seen whenever the apple is falling from the tree whenever the apple is falling from the tree or whenever the mango is falling from the tree the apple or the mango is always falling on the ground whenever the apple or the mango is falling from the tree they are always falling on the ground they are falling on the ground because the earth is pulling because the earth is pulling this apple and the mango toward the ground in the same way suppose if we are throwing the stone up aside if we are throwing the stone up aside after some time the stone will come down and fall on the ground so why they are coming down toward the earth and falling on the ground they are coming down and falling on the ground because of the gravitational pull because of the gravitational pull of the earth because the earth is pulling because the earth is pulling each and every object toward the ground so what is gravitational force 
force the pull for the pull force which is acting from the earth to pull each and every object towards it that is called the gravitational force so my children gravitational force is also a type of the non contact force because suppose see, this is the chalk this chalk is so much away from the ground this chalk is so much away from the ground this is the chalk this chalk is so much away from the ground then also the force is acting suppose i am throwing this chalk suppose i am leaving this chalk this chalk is automatically coming and falling on the ground because the earth is pulling this chalk towards itself so this force is acting without any physical contact this force is acting without any physical contact there is no physical contact between the earth and the apple there is no physical contact between the earth and the apple on the tree then also whenever the apple will fall it has to fall on the ground because the earth is pulling it from a distance from a distance even though there is not a touch suppose i am throwing the stone up a side there is no contact between the earth and the stone then also the stone will be pulled by the earth to a downside and the stone have to fall down because of the gravitational pull there is no contact between the ground and the stone then also the stone is falling on the ground because of the gravitational pull so these are the examples of the non contact pull it means the two bodies are not in contact with one another the stone apple or the mango they are not in contact with the ground then also they are falling on the ground because the earth is pulling them from a distance so that is also a type of the non contact force so the pull force the pull force of the earth which acts upon each and every object to pull it toward the earth is called the gravitational force so this gravitational force is the example of the non contact force because in this gravitational force the two objects are not in contact with one another then also the force is acting upon them the second example the second example my child it is the second example is the magnetic force m a g n e t i is the magnetic force magnetic force what is magnetic force the force the force by which the force by which a magnet the force by which a magnet pulls the object the force by which the magnet pulls the object towards towards it what is magnetic force the force the force by which a magnet the force by which the force by which a magnet pulls the object towards its which are which are of iron nickel nickel and cobalt cobalt so my children what is magnetic force the force the force by which a magnet pulls the object towards its which are of iron nickel and the cobalt it is called the magnetic force suppose my children you are having the magnet suppose you are having the magnet and suppose near the magnet if you are going to bring the things made up of the iron nickel and the cobalt then the things made up of the iron nickel and the cobalt will go and stick they will go and stick to the magnet why because the magnet is pulling them from a distance the magnet is pulling them from a distance even though even though the things made up of the iron nickel and the cobalt are not in touch with the magnet then also suppose if you are going to bring the magnet near the things made up of the iron nickel and the cobalt then the magnet will go and stick to them or that object will come and stick to the magnet because of the magnetic force so this magnetic force is also an example of the non contact force because see suppose suppose these are the iron nickel suppose these are the iron nickel and suppose this is a magnet suppose i am going to bring this magnet suppose i am going to bring this magnet near this iron nickel this iron nickel will go and stick to this magnet because of the strong magnetic power because of the pull force of the magnet so that is also an example of the non contact force even the two bodies even the two bodies are not in contact with one another then also the objects are going and sticking to the object so see magnetic force the force the force by which a magnet pulls the object towards it which are of iron nickel and cobalt so that is also a type of the non contact force so my children these are the two main examples of the non contact force now let us see about the so my children in this magnetic force suppose if you are going to bring the things made up of the iron nickel and the cobalt near the magnet they will go and stick to the magnet because of the strong magnetic power so in this even though the magnet is not in the touch with the iron nickels or the things made up of the iron nickel and cobalt then also they are going and sticking to the magnet because of the strong magnetic power so that is also type of the non contact force now my children after that we are going to come to the topic that is going to say about the yeah 
Now, third one is the electrostatic force. E L E C T R O S T A T I C electrostatic force. What is electrostatic force? Listen very carefully. The force, the force by which a charge body, charge body is the force by which a charge body is pulling charge body is pulling a uncharged body uncharged body so what is electrostatic force the force the force by which a charged body is pulling a uncharged body so what once let us see a bit electrostatic force what is electrostatic force the force the force by which a charged body is pulling a uncharged body so here one body is charged one body is charged and one body is uncharged so the charged body is pulling the uncharged body the force the force by which a charged body is pulling the uncharged body that is called the electrostatic force for example my children we have seen suppose suppose we are having suppose we are having the plastic scale suppose we are having the plastic scale and suppose we are rubbing the plastic scale with our heels suppose we are having the plastic scale and we are rubbing the plastic scale with our heels and after rubbing the plastic scale for a long time upon our heels suppose we are going to bring this plastic scale near the small small pieces of the paper near the small small pieces of the paper then the small small pieces of papers are being attracted to the plastic scale and they are sticking to the plastic scale because when you are rubbing the plastic scale the plastic scale have got charged but the bits of paper or the small small pieces of the paper are the uncharged body so this automatically beta when we bring the scale which we have rubbed upon our heels for a long time near the small bits of paper the small small paper pieces the small small pieces pieces of the paper will stick to the scale because of the electrostatic force so here the scale is the charged body scale is the charged body and the paper, small small pieces of the paper are the uncharged body in the same way suppose if you are rubbing the plastic scale for a long time upon your heels continuously rubbing and after rubbing it for a long time the plastic scale will get charged the plastic scale will get charged because of the rubbing it will have the electrostatic charge it will have the electrostatic charge and suppose after rubbing the plastic scale for a long time upon your heels and suppose you are going to bring this plastic scale near the dust particles near the dust particles or near the sand particles Particles. Then the dust particles and the sand particles will go and stick to the plastic scale because of the electrostatic force. So see, my child, whenever we are rubbing any object, whenever we are rubbing any object, that object get charged. Whenever we are rubbing any object, that object get charged. And the object which we are not rubbing, it is not getting the charge. It is not getting the charge. So what is electrostatic force? The force, the force by which a charged body is pulling a uncharged body is called the electrostatic force so i have already given you my child suppose you are having the plastic scale and you are rubbing the plastic scale upon your heels the plastic scale get charged by rubbing suppose if you are going to bring this plastic scale near the small bits of the paper the small bits of the papers will be attracted to the plastic scale because of the electrostatic force so my child it is also a type of the non contact force because Suppose the plastic scale and the bits of the paper are at distance. The plastic scale and the bits of paper are at a distance. Then also these papers are going and sticking to the scale, even though the scale is at a distance. So that is a type of the non-contact force. Because of the non-contact force, the force which do not need the force which do not need any type of the physical touch between the two bodies to act is called the non-contact force. So we have seen the three examples. The gravitational force is a type of the non-contact force. The magnetic force is a non-contact force, and the electrostatic force is also a type of the non-contact force. Now, my children, after that, my children, we come to the topic about the yeah. Now, factors on which the let us move forward, my child. Yeah. Now, after this, we have to come to the topic that is to discuss something about yeah. So factors, factors on which frictional factors on which frictional force force depend. Depend. So, my dear, once again, let us see the frictional force. What is frictional force? 
द फोर्स विच इज एक्टिंग बिटवीन द टू बॉडीज द फोर्स विच इज एक्टिंग बिटवीन द टू बॉडीज वेन द टू बॉडीज आर इन कॉन्टेक्ट विद वन अनादर एंड वन बॉडी इज मूविंग अपॉन अपॉन अनादर बॉडी सो द रेजिस्टेंस फोर्स द रेजिस्टेंस फोर्स और द ऑपोजिट फोर्स विच इज एक्टिंग बिटवीन द टू बॉडीज वेन वन बॉडी इज टचिंग एंड मूविंग द अनादर बॉडी सो द स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ द फोर्स विच इज एक्टिंग बिटवीन द टू सर्फेस इज कॉल्ड द फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स सो लेट एस से फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स एफ आर आई सी टी आई ओ एन एल फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स लेट एस सी द फोर्स द फोर्स विच इज द फोर्स विच इज एक्टिंग द फोर्स विच इज एक्टिंग बिटवीन द फोर्स द फोर्स विच इज एक्टिंग बिटवीन द टू सर्फेसेस between the two surfaces in contact two surfaces in contact with one another one another the force the force which is acting between the two surfaces in contact with one another and they are and they are moving and they are moving in opposite opposite direction and they are moving in opposite direction so let's see beta the force frictional force the force the force which is acting between the two surfaces in contact with one another and are moving in opposite direction suppose my children so see suppose this is my group suppose this is my group and this is the surface of the duster so see this duster this duster is moving upon the duster is moving upon the notebook see i am moving i am moving this duster upon the notebook so between the surface of this notebook and between the surface of the duster the frictional force is acting the frictional force is acting so the force the force which is acting between the two surfaces the force which is acting between the two surfaces when one body is moving upon another body the force which is acting between the two bodies the force which is acting between the force which is acting between the surfaces of the two bodies once again the force which is acting between the surfaces of the two bodies when one body is moving upon another body when one body is moving upon another body that force is called the frictional force so the force which is acting between the surface of this notebook and the surface of this duster that is called the frictional force so once again the force the force which is acting between the surfaces of the two bodies when one body is moving upon another body the force which is acting between the surfaces of the two bodies when one body is moving upon another body so between both the surface the special type of force is acting that is called the frictional force this frictional force is always trying to reduce the speed of the moving object this frictional force is always trying to reduce the speed of the moving object this frictional force is always acting in the direction opposite to the direction of the motion of the body now let us see my child Now see, whenever, whenever we are walking, listen, my child. Whenever, whenever we are walking on the ground, whenever we are walking on the ground, between the ground and our shoes, between the ground and our shoes or the feet, the frictional force is acting. Whenever the bus or a truck is moving on a road, whenever a truck or a bus is moving on the road, between the tires, between the tires of the bus and the truck and the road, the frictional force is acting. whenever the bus or the truck is moving on the road or whenever we are moving the bicycle on the road so between the tire and the road the frictional force is acting whenever we are walking or running on the ground the frictional force is acting between our feet and the ground because the two surfaces are in contact with one another now let us see my child what are the two ways of what are the various factors on which the frictional force depend means factors on which the frictional force depend first one mass of the object mass of the object mass of the object mass means weight w e i g h t weight mass means the weight of it second one mass of the object second one nature of surface nature of surface nature of surface is one a nature of surface then third one is my child about the surface in contact surface in contact 
So what what are the factors? What are the factors on which the frictional force depends? So the factor factors on which frictional force depends are mass of the object, nature of the surface, and surface in quantity. So there are three main factors. There are three main factors. There are three main factors upon which the frictional force depends. So the frictional force depends upon the mass of the object, nature of the surface, nature of the surface. Surface in quantity. Surface in quantity. Now let us see. Here the meaning of mass is the weight. Meaning of the mass is the weight. So my child, see. Heavier the object, more will the friction. Suppose the object is very very heavy, more frictional force will act. Suppose the object is light in weight or less in weight, less frictional force will act. Heavier the object, more is the frictional force. Lighter the object, less is the frictional force. So my child, here mass is the weight. Suppose the object is very very heavy. Then more frictional force will act between the two surfaces. And suppose the object is very less in weight or light in weight, then the less frictional force will act. Nature of surface. Suppose the surface is rough. Suppose the surface is rough. More frictional force will act. Suppose the surface is smooth. Less frictional force will act. Suppose the surface is rough. More frictional force. Suppose the surface is smooth. Less frictional force. Then we try. Surface in contact. Surface in contact. Suppose surface more surface in contact. Suppose the surface is more in contact, more frictional force. Suppose the less surface in contact, less frictional force. Let us see my child. Heavy, heavy, light. So suppose suppose the object is heavy. Suppose the object is heavy. Suppose the object is heavy, more frictional force will act. Suppose the object is light, less frictional force will act. Suppose the object is very heavy, more frictional force will act. Suppose the object is light, less frictional force will act. In the same way, suppose the object is rough. Rough. Suppose the object is rough, more frictional force will act. Suppose the object, suppose the object is rough, more frictional force will act. Suppose the object is smooth. Suppose the object is smooth, less frictional force will act. So my child, suppose suppose the surface is very very rough, more frictional force will act. Suppose the surface is smooth, less frictional force will act. Now it is surface in contact. More area, more area in contact. More area in contact. Then more frictional force. More area in contact. More frictional force. Less area. Less area in contact. Less area in contact. Then the less frictional force. So my child, see. Suppose the two surfaces are in more contact. Suppose the two surfaces are in more contact, more frictional force will act. Suppose the two surfaces are in less in contact, then less frictional force will take. Suppose my child, mass of the object. Suppose the object is very very heavy, more frictional force will act. Suppose the object is light in weight, less frictional force will act. Suppose the object is rough. Suppose the object is in the rough surface. Suppose the object is in the rough surface. Then the more friction force will act. Suppose the object is in the smooth surface, then the less friction force will act. In the same way, surface in contact. Suppose more area of the surface are in contact. Suppose more area of surface are in contact, more friction force will act, and the less suppose the less area are in contact, less friction force will act. See my child. Suppose, yeah. Suppose my child. Let us see the third example. Yeah, first one. Heavier light. See, here this book is heavier than this. Hang. This book is heavier, but this duster is lighter. This book is heavier. This duster is lighter. So book 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 will give the more friction, and duster will give the less friction. In the same way, smooth surface and the rough surface. Suppose the surface is very very rough. Then the more frictional force will act. Suppose the surface is very very smooth. Then the less frictional force will act. Area in contact. See my child. Suppose my child. See area means how much broad it is. Area means how much broad it is. Suppose my child see. I am moving this chalk box. Suppose I am moving this chalk box upon this book. I am moving this chalk box upon this book. More area in contact. Suppose suppose I am moving this chalk box upon the book. More area is in contact. Suppose I am doing this. Uh, suppose I am going to now move this pencil upon the book. Suppose I am going to move this pencil upon the book. The area of the pencil is less. The area of the pencil is less. Area of the 
chalk box is more area of the chalk box is more so suppose the area is less less friction suppose the area is more more friction here more surface here this is very capital here here more surfaces are in contact here more surfaces are in contact so more friction here less surface are in contact here less surfaces are in contact so less friction so suppose more more area in contact more friction less area in contact less friction see suppose i am moving my one palm upon the another palm area is so much big big area big area so more friction will add suppose i am going to move this hand with a like this upon my palm suppose i am going to move my this palm like this upon this palm that area is less here the area is less suppose i am moving both of them like this then the area is more of both of them so more friction will act suppose i am going to move this hand between this way then here the less area is there so less friction will act so these are the factors my child on which the friction force depends so my child let us see about this uh, yeah so the friction force the factors on which the friction force depends so the friction force depends upon mass of the object here mass means the weight suppose the object is heavy more friction force will act suppose the object is light in weight or less in weight less friction force will act nature of surface two type of nature are there rough surface and a smooth surface suppose the surface is rough more friction force will act suppose the surface is smooth less friction force will act in the same way surface in contact surface in contact means how much area of the two bodies are in contact how much area of the two bodies are in contact suppose more area of the surfaces are in contact more area of the surfaces are in contact more friction force will be there and suppose the less area of the surfaces are in contact then the less friction force will act so my child these are the three main factors on which the friction force depends now after this my child here on the topic yeah Here comes the topic of the day. That is going to say something about, yeah. Advantages. Advantages of friction. advantages of friction what are the advantages of the friction matter advantages of the friction so what is it this friction is a very very necessary evil this friction is a very very necessary evil this friction is harmful also and this friction is very very useful also this friction is very very harmful also this friction is very very useful also so how this friction is useful we are able to write we are able to write on a piece of paper we are able to write on a piece of paper because of the friction we are able to walk and run because of the friction we are able to write because of the friction we are able to walk and run because of the friction if there is no friction between the notebook and the pencil or the notebook and the pen we will not be able to write and suppose we are able to walk because of the friction we are able to run because of the friction if there is no friction when we are walking we cannot walk we will slip down so my child we can walk and run because of the friction we can write because of the friction we are holding the knot we are tying the knot we are tying the knot the knot is remaining on the piece because of the friction suppose there is no friction then we cannot the knot cannot remain on the piece we are inserting we are inserting or putting we are inserting or putting the nails of the screw on the walls and the nails of the screw and the nails of the screws are remaining on the wall because of the friction if there is no friction then the nails of the screws will not remain on the wall so we are able to put the nails of the screws on the wall and they remain on the place because of the friction we are able to walk and run because of the friction we are able to write because of the friction if there will be no friction we will not be able to walk right or we will to put the knot on a proper place because they will open up again and again because of the no friction now let us see about the disadvantages of the friction so my child second one is the disadvantages d i s a d v a n t a g e s disadvantages of friction disadvantages of the friction okay my child now what are the disadvantages of the friction let us see my child it produces it produces heat second one it causes it causes wastage it causes wastage 
of Nig. Nig. It causes wear and tear. Wear and tear. It causes wear and tear. See my chart. So these are the three main. These are the three main disadvantages of the friction. Now let us see. Let us see what are the disadvantages of the friction. So the disadvantages of the friction are it produces the heat. Whenever, whenever the friction is acting between the two bodies, whenever the friction is acting between the surfaces of the two bodies, it produces the heat. It produces the heat. Second thing, it causes wastage of energy. It causes the wastage of energy. Means because of the frictional force, because of the frictional force, more and more fuel, more and more energy is being used. Now it causes wear and tear. It causes the wear and tear. The object get wear and tear. The object get wear and tear because of the frictional force. The object get the object get wear and tear because of the frictional force. My children, you might have seen you are putting you are putting the new tire you are putting the new tires upon your bicycle. You are putting the new tires upon your bicycle. But after two or three years, after two or three years, the tire is being totally damaged. The tire is being totally damaged. The tire get damaged because of the frictional force between the road and your tire. In the same way, my child. Suppose you are seeing the buses and the track tire, they also get damaged. They also get damaged because the tire is continuously rubbing on the road. So the great frictional force is acting. So the frictional force is damaging the tires of the buses and the track. In the same way, suppose you have brought the new football. You have brought the new football. The outer covering, the outer covering of the football is very, very outer cover of the football is very, very nice and smooth. But after playing the football for two or three months, after playing, after playing the football for two or three months, you will see the outer surface of the football cover. The outer surface of the football cover will have a lot of scratches and all, and it will become so much rough. It will become so much rough because of the friction. So it is creating the wear and tear. You might have seen the soles of your shoes and the slippers. The soles of your shoes and the slippers get wear and tear. आपके जूते चप्पल आपके जूते चप्पल्स के बीच सोल्स घिस जाते हैं आपके जूते चप्पल्स के सोल्स घिस जाते हैं बिकॉज ऑफ द फ्रिक्शन बिकॉज ऑफ द फ्रिक्शन बिकॉज द ग्रेट फ्रिक्शन फोर्स इज एक्टिंग बिटवीन द ग्राउंड एंड योर सोल्स एंड द स्लीपर्स सरफेस सो माई चार दिस आर द थ्री मीन डिसएडवाटेज ऑफ द फ्रिक्शन सो द फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स प्रोड्यूस द हीट इट कॉज द वेस्टेज ऑफ एनर्जी Frictional force produces the heat. It causes the wastage of the energy. It causes the wear and the tear of the object. So these are the three main disadvantages of the friction. Now, my children, after this, you might be seeing. See, whenever we are running in any type of the electric machine, when we are running in any type of the electric machine, after some time it it becomes so much heated up. It becomes so much heated up because of the friction between the internal parts. Now, after this, my child. we will come to the topic that is going to say something about the reducing friction ways to reduce ways to reduce friction ways to reduce friction means what are the various ways by which we can reduce the friction here yeah. first one by putting oil or grease oil or oil or grease between between moving parts moving parts so much so see we are putting we are putting the oil and the grease in our bicycles and all we are putting the oil and the grease in our bicycles Or our doors and the windows, or our doors and the windows, and even in our fans also. So we are putting the oil and the grease between the moving parts to reduce the friction. In the same way, my child, by by using by using ball bearing, ball bearing. Suppose. Suppose we are using the ball bearing. The suppose we are using the ball bearing between the moving parts. Suppose we are using the ball bearings between the moving parts. Then also the friction is being reduced. Now third one by making by making the surface by making the surface smooth by making the surface smooth. See my child. As we know by making the surface smooth. As we have seen, my child, rougher the surface, rougher the surface, more is the friction. Smoother the surface, less is the friction. 
asmin of my child rougher the surface more is the friction smoother the surface less is the friction so suppose the various way the various ways to reduce the friction are by putting oil or the grease between the moving parts suppose if we are putting the oil or the grease between the moving parts then the friction is being reduced and suppose by using the ball bearing suppose we are using the ball bearing then also the friction is being reduced by making the surface smoother so suppose my teacher if we are making the rougher surface smoother then the friction can be reduced Thank you, Madhuri children. That's all for today, Madhuri. And we will see later onwards the next topics in this lesson.